regional integration be supported in order to promote economic prosperity on the African continent. We are in Sipopo, a small town on the outskirts of Malabo, where the 54th Assembly of the Africa Development Bank, AFDB, was held. More than 2,000 participants attended the meetings. An opportunity for experts, governments, business, civil society representatives, think tanks and academics to share their views on the effort needed to foster regional integration and to exchange views on the major developmental challenges in Africa. To begin its emergence, Africa wants to integrate better. Regional integration through the abolition of borders and the improvement and construction of transport links. To achieve this, the Africa Development Bank is investing more than $15 billion to finance regional integration infrastructure. Its president has established five strategic priorities to accelerate Africa's development. The strengthening of integration between countries is the focal point of these priorities. The Senegambia Bridge, inaugurated in January 2019 and linking the two banks of the Gambia River, not only makes it possible to boost trade but also to promote sub regional integration via the Dakar, Banju, Bissau, Kotonu, Abijo, and Lagos Corridor. The bridge was mainly financed by the Africa Development Bank FDB for $93.8 million. It has already facilitated the interconnection of road network and significantly reduced travel time. There's excitement in the air on Africa's economic opportunities. And those opportunities are boundless. The newly minted African continental free trade area will make Africa the largest free trade zone in the world with combined GDP of over $3.3 trillion. Pulling down tariff barriers alone will spoil trade by at least 53%. And with the elimination of non-tariff barriers, trade could easily double. In Central Africa, one of the least integrated regions on the continent, the Pan-Africa Financial Institution has allocated 3.9 billion euros over seven years, an amount available for investment projects that can strengthen links between countries. This sub-region covers an area equivalent to three quarters of Russia and has a population of some 130 million a potential market that remains extremely segmented due to the multiplication of national borders. In order to encourage sub-regional integration, the EFDB is committed to building not only quality infrastructure, but also to developing inter-regional trade and cross-border investment. Central African, a region that is endowed by uh, a huge potential of uh, natural and human resources, uh, today is uh, lagging uh, beyond other region in Africa in terms of uh, integration. Just measuring by the volume of central regional trade, uh, this region uh, by that measure has only 6% uh, as an index of integration compared to say 15% or an average of 17% uh, in Africa. The agricultural sector is one of the sectors that should benefit more from greater integration of African economies. With 60% of the world's available arable land, the continent holds the key to global food security. The challenge now is for African farmers to integrate regional and global value chains. This is precisely the ambition of the Feed Africa program launched in Malabo by the AFDB in partnership with South Korea. Recently, uh, Republic of Korea, our government, to start to help the African continent. So, uh, last year, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, institution African Foundation was founded for the help of African continent. So this meeting also, the Busan Metro City came here to present the drone system for agriculture section in the Africa. Yeah. People do back-breaking work, small farmers every day, but they get very little from the land. Uh, so productivity enhancement is a big issue. And that comes only with innovation and technology. 
Uh, and second also is that, you know, uh, small farmers uh, can be more productive. Uh, they, could be, they could leverage their power more if they are organized into groups. Uh, alone, they are very weak and vulnerable. Because one farmer, if he's devastated by some problem disease, uh, he's wiped out. But if it's within an association or a cooperative, uh, thousands of them, they're able to leverage that power. According to the Africa Development Bank, the global need for agroindustry is about $8 trillion and far exceed information technology sector, even the automobile sector. In 2019, African growth is expected to increase from 4% to 4.1% in 2020, but it remains insufficient to reduce unemployment and poverty. For this growth to reach a larger segment of the population, it is necessary not only to develop infrastructure, but also to achieve greater financial inclusion. The rate of banking in Africa remains extremely low, with only 43% of adults with a bank account. Esper believe that digital finance on the continent should promote access to banking services for as many people as possible. With this in mind, the Africa Development Bank and its partners launched the Africa Digital Financial Inclusion Mechanism in Malabo to strengthen the security and development of digital financing transactions in Africa. The form aims to promote access to digital finance services for some 332 million Africans, 60% of which are women. The long-term objective is to mobilize $100 million in grants and another $300 million in debt from the bank's regular capital resources by 2030. So what's great about the digital aspect is that we think it will allow us to accelerate financial inclusion. Financial inclusion through traditional infrastructure has its limit in the sense that it will certainly not be possible to have a branch or commercial bank in every village in Africa, or it would take an enormous amount of time and also huge infrastructure costs. We also need to ascertain whether the sectors and countries are willing to make this kind of investment. On the other hand, with digital, we open up another area of possibilities, and we can also divert or bypass the obstacles that are posed by the traditional system. So with AFDB, we want to accelerate financial inclusion by 2030 and bring in more than 330 million people into a digital financial space. This funds will be used to develop electronic financial services for low-income communities. It's the official launch of the Africa Digital Finance Initiative. Uh, we work with a number of partners, for, first and foremost the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but also the governments of Luxembourg and France, and hopefully soon many other partners. The goal is to ensure that the 332 million Africans who today are not part of the financial system do not have access to financial services, that those people get connected and become able to really engage in the more formal economy by 2030. And of this 332 million people, 60% of those targeted will be women. Getting women more engaged in the formal economy is absolutely critical for accelerated development. Digital technologies are expanding access to financial services for millions of people, including women. This is an incredible attractive prospect, and the AFDB is relying heavily on these new tools to integrate millions of Africans currently unbanked into the former and regulated financial system. During this annual general meeting, the Africa Development Bank also signed several bilateral agreements. One of them is the Boost Africa eLab initiative. A joint initiative of the AFDB and the European Investment Bank for Youth Employment in Africa. It aims to make the most of the continent's potential and to multiply opportunities on the ground. The agreement provides for a grant of some two and a half million euros. We took advantage yesterday of signing with the African Development Bank 
a part of the Boost Africa project that we are co-financing. This is a very good initiative uh, between the EU and the African Development Bank, and we have one component to, make it, uh, to help to make it fly in the best way possible. This is one of the projects that we are financing to support African development. Uh, we do that in the sphere now of entrepreneurship development, to help young, uh, young people, ideas, entrepreneurs, to, uh, to bring up their ideas up to reality. It's a kind of helping incubators, startup companies uh, to, to bring them up to market and then to see it, how they can invest into good ideas, create jobs, uh, innovation and bring, uh, bring their respective sectors forward. The Africa Development Bank wants to play a major role in the fight against poverty and improvement of living conditions on the continent through the promotion of public and private capital investments in projects and programs that can contribute to the continent's economic and social development. To achieve these objectives, shareholders approve an increase in the AFDB's equity capital. We are absolutely optimistic because at the African Development Bank level, there are regional shareholders as well as non-regional shareholders. But the decision-making process is a consensus. A consensus means conciliation, concession on both sides, and we are certain that we'll succeed in convincing some non-regional partners to join the majority of African states that believe it is necessary to recapitalize our bank to give it the means to allow this regional integration to happen. Financing infrastructure requires significant resources. The African Development Bank is a solid bank. With the support of our shareholders from this meeting, it's extremely solid. As we look to the future with confidence. In 2018, the AFDB contributed to the restoration or rehabilitation of 2,430 kilometers of power lines and installation of 447 megawatts of power generation units. 19 million people had access to improved agricultural technologies, while another 14 million people had access to improved transport services.